All right, everybody. Uh, hi there. Uh, we'll get right started. Uh, so my name is Sinongo. Uh, I am uh, an illustrator and a designer uh, here in New York City. Um, I've lived here about four, four and a half years. Um, and before that, lived in various other places, uh, Japan. Uh, but I'm originally from Nigeria. Um, and uh, I grew up in Nigeria. Uh, I spent all of my formative years there. Uh, and so what I'm going to be speaking to you guys today about is uh, what's happening in the Nigerian tech community. Um, it's not something that gets talked about a whole lot, um, but there are quite a few links between uh, what I see happening uh, on the East Coast here in New York, uh, having just moved here, and then also the things that I see happening in Lagos and some of the other cities uh, in, um, in Nigeria. So this focus is really on games uh, and learning, um, and this is a little bit of a, a Nigerian tech story. So, <laughs> I had to put this in there. That's me. Uh, a long time ago, this is in Nigeria. Uh, I've always been fascinated with technology. Uh, I've always wanted to be either a rocket scientist or a moon colonist or something like that. Um, I never got that chance, but it's, it's stuck with me. Um, and so, even from this early kind of formative uh, age of mine, uh, this has been an interest of mine and something which uh, I've done a lot with. And, more recently, probably um, maybe four years ago or so, uh, I started Pixel Fable. And Pixel Fable is just a, a set of interactive Nigerian stories. Uh, some of them are for children, um, and some of them are more focused on adults. Uh, they're very much like the Aesop's Fables that you learned when you were a kid, but interactive. And so doing all of this and, and looking at what other people are doing in Nigeria in the same way uh, is something that I find quite interesting. So, Nigeria today, uh, it's a huge complex place, um, and I'll just provide you a few of the, the main points about what the country is and what it's not, uh, to uh, help you kind of see where the tech community fits there. Population expansion. Um, we've all heard about this, uh, Africans have lots of babies and continue to have babies. Uh, right now, I think we're at 170 million people in Nigeria, um, and that's growing. Uh, it's growing exponentially. This uh, is uh, an illustration for uh, Nkiri Jones, who's a, a fashion designer. And you can see one artist and uh, kind a of representation of what Lagos, the, our first city, needs to look like in the future in order to accommodate all these people. Um, and we're talking about 530 million people um, by uh, 2100. That's a lot. That's half the size of India in Nigeria. Other things that are happening, we have uh, Minister Johnson, who is the Communication Technology Minister, uh, appointed by the President to uh, kind of foster uh, CT and uh, information uh, technology in the country. Uh, she, do, she does uh, investment rounds um, and kind of seed money and so on for the tech community there, and is an incredibly powerful person and somebody that uh, a lot of Nigerians look to for advice and uh, for mentorship. There are also other things uh, like these uh, events. This one happened in June uh, in Lagos, again, looking at uh, founders and other people in the tech and uh, business community to come together and start tell uh, younger Nigerians what's happening and give them some advice uh, on things that they can do. Uh, if you get a chance and you go to this website, every single one of those people down there who was a speaker or a part of a panel, those are the people that you should have come and uh, talk um, at your events. She Leads Africa is another one, uh, where we're starting to, to focus on uh, women as entrepreneurs and as tech leaders um, in the country. Now, I put this up here not because Gidimo is any um, fascinating example of the Nigerian tech ecosystem. Um, Gidi is the slang word for Lagos, which is um, our, our first city, like I said. Uh, so, Gidi Mobile. Uh, but if you notice anything here, uh, it's probably that iPhone does not feature at all. Um, this is probably a 180 from what we see um, in the, the launch sites uh, and the, the, the tech sites uh, here. Um, it's, iOS is simply not, not a factor. Um, it's Blackberry uh, and it's Android, uh, Nokia. <laughs> this is one of my favorites. Bad Omen which is the sequel to Revelation. Um, this is a movie uh, that came out, um, and Nigerians are quite well known for Nollywood, which is the Nigerian Hollywood. Uh, it's a huge industry, much huger than you would imagine. It's probably one of the biggest movie industries in the world. And they produce tons and tons of movies. Now, I'm not really sure what's going on with the guy wearing underwear riding a motorbike. <laughs> <laughs> He's, 
there, uh, and this is this is kind of a regular thing in in this uh, this type of movie. Very poorly done, um, and <laughs> very very funny. And we see scenes like this in every city in Nigeria, where you have these stores that are jam packed with these movies, uh, VCDs, DVDs uh, from Nollywood. Um, and at first glance, you think, wow, that's a lot of crap on the shelves. And it's true, it is. But then you compare that to a scene from Akihabara in Japan, and it starts to look very, very similar. Um, so these are some of the things that are happening in Nigeria, um, in the, the community, uh, that I think start to draw parallels with uh, what's happening in tech. Here, of course, Iroko TV is the, um, uh, what is it, Netflix uh, of Nollywood. So now you can just go online and watch all this stuff if you want. So you see that jump happening away from uh, the VCDs and the online. Nigeria has always been known as a very literary nation. Um, There's a huge uh, magazine and uh, newspaper scene. Um, a lot of writers, um, Wole Shoenka, who's probably our first you know, writer, um, the, uh, the son of Nigeria, as they will. Um, and Nigerians have always prided themselves on being uh, English speaking and uh, being aware of, uh, of that, that type of community. And so we have English as this global language, uh, which we're very much tapped into. Um, it's much easier to access a lot of the, the tech sites and um, uh, you know, to-dos or how-tos and so on uh, if you speak English. And this is something which really benefits Nigeria immensely. So, on to the, the idea of games and what exactly is happening here. Uh, you're not going to see uh, the massive, massive online games that you might see in the West. Um, the technology and infrastructure simply is not there. Uh, what you'll see instead is a lot more casual, uh, maybe the mobile games, uh, and a few things that will happen just in, in the browser. And I'll show you some examples. But, the point that I want to make as I show all of these is not simply about the game, uh, but about these tiny little cultural details that you might not pick up if you're not Nigerian or you're not West African. So I'll try and point a few of those out. So here we've got Chop Up, which is a game studio, and these are some of the characters that they, uh, they posted on Twitter a little while ago. And you see a mix of both Western and Nigerian uh, characterizations popping up. Now, of course, we have the very Western big guy, right? There's always a big guy. It's the thing or, um, you know, the Hulk. But then you also have another character who's wearing traditional African clothing, and uh, as it's called in the U.S., a dashiki, uh, with the embroidery and so on. Uh, they're barefoot um, in a way that you probably wouldn't get in a lot of uh, uh, American games. <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> there's a little bit of a story behind this. Um, a few years ago, uh, the government passed a law saying that um, all riders of motorbikes, uh, they're called Okada. Okada is just like the motorcycle taxi. So all the Okada riders in Nigeria needed to wear helmets. Uh, this is of course done for safety reasons, um, but there was an immediate shortage of helmets in the country. Um, and we couldn't import enough helmets soon enough. So you got scenes like this. Um, it's ingenious, really. Um, and this has become a joke uh, in Nigeria, and a lot of people will laugh about it. But then you start to see <laughs> games developers <laughs> doing this. And the guy's wearing a bucket on his head. And it's just these tiny little details that you might not pick up. It's really, really interesting. Uh, Mahauchi, which is, you know, it's just one of these, like, you're an archer, so you have to shoot down vultures. But the illustration and the, the quality of this is really, really great. Um, I just wanted to post this as an example of. Uh, what great illustra illustration you can find. And perhaps one of my favorite, Ole. Um, you'll notice in the language that uh, is on the screen here is written in Pidgin English. Uh, Pidgin is the lingua franca um, in Nigeria. Uh, it's probably the language that uh, all of us can, can speak and relate to. And it's a slang that you might not understand as an American or a Westerner. But you'll notice that it says, you want to play Oya, click anywhere. Oya means hey man, or dude, or bro, or something like that. And so this slang is appearing in these games in a way to make them accessible for Nigerian players. You'll notice also his flip-flops, which are just these cheap rubber flip-flops that you get in uh, Nigeria, and the, the soles have been worn out. This is really common. You see these littered all over the street when people wear out the soles of their, their flip-flops and they throw them away. Um, so it's clear that they're putting these details in uh, to attract the Nigerian audience. 
So the next thing, uh, and perhaps a little bit more serious, is uh, on learning and what's happening in the, the learning space, if you like that word, if you don't like that word. Uh, so Bino and Fino, anybody heard of Bino and Fino? No? Okay, well Bino and Fino are a brother and sister duo. Um, they have their own TV show, uh, and they live in this urban space, it's probably Lagos. Um, and the reason I put this up here is it completely upends this traditional view that we may have of West Africa and Africa in general, that of giraffes and, uh, and monkeys and lions and so on. But in reality, Lagos is a city of, what, 18 million people? That, it makes New York look like a province somewhere out in the world. Um, and Bino and Fino, they are some of the kids that live there. And uh, so it's, you know, it's like Sesame Street, right? They teach the kids lessons and, and so on. But then you look at her dress and she's wearing a traditional African clothing. Uh, this is very, very clever and very well done. Ebola facts, uh, again, something which has been in the news. Um, and uh, unfortunately, there have been a lot of people who have died in West Africa. Fortunately, Nigeria has been spared the majority of this. Uh, and part of that is due to luck dumb luck, and part of that is due to the, the government's response. But when this started happening in West Africa, a group of developers got together and built EbolaFacts.com. Um, and you'll note a few details. Uh, basically, the site, it uh, helps to provide facts about Ebola, because there was a lot of misinformation um, out there, and uh, a lot of people who were not educated, maybe to the same level that we are, and they didn't really know what was going on. Um, so you'll note that you can choose a language to get started in, uh, either English or French. Um, but it's not an American flag, it's a British flag. We used to be a colony of Britain, so this is a tiny little detail which indicates uh, kind of the, the cultural relevance here. But as you go through, it tells you about some false information, things that you shouldn't believe. Uh, sales of salt water in Nigeria skyrocketed um, because the, uh, the, the rumor was that if you washed with salt water, uh, you would be immune to Ebola. Sounds stupid, but this is what uh, one of these sites is, is here to, to counteract. CC Hub is uh, a tech incubator in Lagos. Uh, I had the opportunity to, to go there about two years ago, um, and I was just amazed. When I left Nigeria, I'm from the bush in Nigeria. There's nothing where I live. Uh, it's dusty, and I live on a dirt road. We don't have electricity or running water, uh, and that's kind of how I grew up. And I go to uh, Lagos, and I'm in this massive city, and I go to this tech incubator, and there's all of these people who look exactly like a group of kids that I would see in downtown Manhattan or in Detroit or wherever else I might go. And they're all developers and they're all being funded uh, by this incubator. So they go there and build games and, uh, and platforms. But a lot of the things that I'm showing you here are coming out of CC Hub and groups like that uh, because uh, you know that, that's where the money and that's where the talent is congregated in much the same way as we're in the space. Uh, one of the things that came out of uh, a CC Hub is Ethical, which um, I don't know how you guys feel about online learning and uh, you know the uh, uh, the use of the internet to, to replace teachers. This isn't really doing that. What this is doing is helping kids uh, practice for tests that they need to take um, in the Nigerian school system, which is notoriously horrible. Uh, teachers don't show up. There's no books. There's no supplies. So what this is doing is trying to jump ahead. Uh, of that and, and make sure that kids can, can study. DevCenter.com, uh, which is another platform which is started, not targeted at students, but targeted at us. Um, and this is uh, a kind of a little social network that some Nigerian developers put together um, to talk about the projects that they're working on and to ask for advice and so on. So if you get a chance, please sign up, support this. This is really, really cool stuff. It's a beta, so it looks eh. You know, it's not Behance, they don't have Behance money, but they're really, really trying. Behance is great, but they, they don't have that money. Okay, and on to something near and dear to my heart. ASA, which is uh, very much like Pixel Fable in that they're taking traditional African stories um, and translating them to tablets and, and to the web. Um, and so you'll see, you know, the adventures of the tortoise or pride goes before the fall. But something else is happening here. They're also teaching language. Um, and so we have Igbo 101. Igbo is one of the largest languages in Nigeria. Or there's also uh, Yoruba 101, uh, so that you can study the Yoruba language. So they're mixing uh, both technology and learning and storytelling in a way that really, really is cool. 
Now, I do have to say that this marketing that they're doing is, is really amazing. So they have this like kids club um, that Asa sets up and they invite the kids to come in. I think they go to the CC hub and they draw pictures, they talk about the characters and then they start to record their voices uh, for the, the apps. Um, and they start to draw characters that the developers will build into the apps. Um, and it's great marketing because the parents are there and they see what the kids are doing and then they buy the apps. Great. Um, but this is also a way that as Nigerians and as Africans we can teach our kids these stories and we can teach them the morals that go along with them without having to always refer back to Disney or refer back to uh, any one of the other kind of games and, and learning sites which don't really address uh, African history and culture. So. Uh, the community is definitely growing rapidly. Um, all sorts of things are happening. The money is flowing in from all different places. Nokia, Microsoft, and, and Google, everybody wants to get into the African market for various insidious reasons. Uh, but <laughs> there's also a lot of kind of, you know, stuff happening on the ground floor. And developers who are building really cool games uh, and really cool learning platforms uh, that I think it's important that we support and at least know about and reference in our presentations and the other things that we talk about. So yeah, um, that's my, my request, I guess, is to find common cause with what's happening in uh, these uh, tech centers, learning centers, um, and uh, start to bring that so we can have some kind of transatlantic uh, communication. So thank you. Uh, Okay, shoot, yes. It's not an area that I'm too familiar with, but I'll just tell you what I've kind of seen happen. Um, and it's probably that, uh, how do I put this without sounding rude? Uh, there's a lot of pirated software out there. Um, and so the designers that I know um, and the, the, uh, kind of the developers and illustrators will have pirated versions of Photoshop and, um, and Illustrator. And that's what of the stuff that you see is probably designed with. Um, when it comes to platforms specifically, I think open source is um, and the platforms that don't require uh, sign-up fees and credit cards and all this type of stuff is where it's at. Um, you wouldn't believe how difficult it is to get banks and uh, financial institutions to take your money if you're a Nigerian. Um, so, yeah, this is something to, uh, to consider. Yes? Do you know any hacker spaces in Nigeria? Um, so the question is, do I know any hacker spaces in Nigeria? Um, CC Hub is probably the one that will come to mind. Um, and they may know other uh, places that are doing stuff like this. So, uh, for example, at CC Hub, they have a, a 3D printer um, that was donated by uh, MakerBot. And so they're trying to do some stuff with it. But um, you'll find um, other kind of engineering centers at some of the universities, which will have a small time spaces that they've set up, but um, yeah. Yeah. So the question is uh, about the infrastructure in Nigeria, um, and uh, because of problems that developing com or countries often have. Um, the, the basic answer is infrastructure is horrible, absolutely horrible. Uh, Nigeria has some of the most dangerous roads in the world. Um, the internet often doesn't work, um, even though there are fiber optic lines that are laid from, from Europe and so on, but access its that last mile or that last foot or whatever it is that they say um, that's a real problem. Um, there are workarounds. Um, so out of Kenya, uh, there's a company run by um, Eric Hersman uh, called Brick. And what they do is, it, it's literally a brick um, and helps you to pick up whatever Wi-Fi or wireless signals you can and kind of aggregates it so that you have access all the time. Uh, it's really cool, a uh, very, very cool project. But in general, uh, when I was there, the most painful thing was trying to get an internet connection. Uh, I just can't describe how painful that was. 
<laughs> so, pretty bad. Yes? Um, could you talk a little bit about your journey from where you grew up, Um, it's a long story, but um, so I was born in Nigeria. I, I went to boarding school in Nigeria because where I'm from, like I said, is the bush and it's just nothing there to speak of. Mango trees and yam farms. Um, and uh, when I was uh, 18, then I went to the University of Michigan. Um, but when I graduated, there wasn't really anything going on for somebody who had a degree in printmaking. <coughs> <laughs> <laughs> so, I moved to Japan. Uh, I was there for seven years uh, and then um, just moved back uh, yeah, about four and a half years ago. Um, so it's been kind of jumping all over the place, but I finally found my place in design and in illustration. So. Alright, thank you very much. Uh, if you have any other questions, just find me over here.